what comes to mind when you think of the word power? Do you think of the TV show called Power, which is about a family obtaining wealth by selling drugs? Or do you think of Superman, a TV show that has an alien who was sent to Earth with superpower abilities within him, able to bend still with his bare hands and his body is bulletproof and he's able to fly? Or do you think of the Black Panther, T'Challa, who gets his superpower strength from a heart-shaped herb grown in Wakanda, even though the actor Chadwick Boseman is indeed a real superhero. He played this part while he was undergoing cancer treatment. Or do you think of this pandemic, the real superheroes that this pandemic has made, the healthcare providers, the grocery store per, uh, personnel, the truck drivers, the first responders, and all the other essential workers who have to work in order to supply our demands and needs? Or do you think of mom or dad, our real superheroes, our everyday superheroes? Remember George Floyd? He used his last dying breath calling for mama. But Paul is talking about a greater power than this, even greater than mom and dad. A power so great that we cannot think or perceive in our mind. Paul, a disciple of Jesus, wrote the epistles Ephesians. And I'm going to read Ephesians 3, 20, 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think or according to the power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The title of my message is The Power Within. The power that Paul is talking about is the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians to encourage them. The first three chapters of this book, he is reminding us the nature of Christ, the richness of Christ, the grace of Christ, our redemption power in Christ, our inheritance in Christ, our new life in Christ, our resources in Christ, and our unity in Christ. Then he continues to tell us about the power of the Holy Spirit, our advocate, our helper. It is the Holy Spirit that brings conviction to lead us to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We can't save ourselves, y'all. It is the Holy Spirit to keep us on the right path. He, the Holy Spirit teaches us, guides us, comforts us, and he intercedes for us. In our text, Paul is talking and saying God is able to do more then we can think more, but not only more, more abundantly more. The King James Version says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Within our minds, we cannot perceive what God can do for us. We don't know. We don't know. We don't even know what to ask for. And even if we did ask, it is still less than what God has for us. First Corinthians 2, 9 says, But as it is written, I has not seen, ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Take a breath. Woo, Jesus is good. Paul states, according to the power that worketh in this, why the work is within us? Why is he saying this? Because the Holy Spirit, we don't know what to pray for. We don't know what we ask for. We don't know what to do. Without the Holy Spirit, we would be like people of the world, hopeless, angry, bitter, confused, full of strife and evilness and more ungodly things. Look at what's going on now. People don't know what's going on. They don't know what's happening in the world. People are fighting over things that they have no control over and don't even see and expect in the end. 
but we who have the Holy Spirit within us know that God is in control. We have peace, we have joy, we have patience, we have long endurance. We know how things work together for the good, for those who know God. As Jesus was preparing the disciples for his death on the cross, he said in John 14, 16, he will not leave us as orphans. He will send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will be with you and in you. John, Jesus said in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit teaches you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. What type of power do you have in you? When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we all receive the power of the Holy Spirit at once. We receive everything we need, all the fruits of the Spirit, all the gifts. The same power, the same power of the Holy Spirit I receive is the same power that you receive. But some Christians seem to be experiencing less fullness of the Holy Spirit than others. Can it be that some Christians don't listen to the Holy Spirit? Are some of you quenching that Holy Spirit? First Thessalonians 519. Or are some of you not being obedient to the Holy Spirit? Not asking, not taking the time to talk to him. Or are you grieving the Holy Spirit? Ephesians 4, 29, 39 to 32. And desiring the things of the flesh and not pursuing an intimate relationship with God. Example, I love fireplaces. I had an apartment once with a real fireplace, y'all. My first time using this fireplace, I put some wood, real wood in the fireplace, popped some popcorn, sat down and watched a movie. I was going to enjoy my movie and enjoy my fire. Then I noticed the fire was going out. So I had to get up, move the fire logs around for the fire to keep going. I couldn't just sit there and watch the movie, I had to get up and stir it up every now and then. My point, God didn't give us this Holy Spirit for us to sit down and do nothing. The Holy Spirit is within us to lead, guide, teach, and show us all things. Jesus says in Acts 1.9, 1, Acts 1, but you shall receive power, and then the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. My last point is that Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit for God to be glorified. Paul said in Ephesians 3.21, unto him be glory in church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, without world without end, amen. When we testify to others about what God has done for us, we are glorifying God. When we pray for others, we are glorifying God. When we bend obedient, we are glorifying God. When we deny our flesh and listen to the Holy Spirit, we are glorifying God. If you have the power of the Holy Spirit within you, are you glorifying God? If you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, you can receive it right now. You, can, you don't have to be able to fly, be bulletproof, or eat a heart-shaped herb. You don't have to be a superstar, superhero, or even a super mom or dad. You can receive all the power that you will ever need by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. According to Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. To God be the glory. Amen.